Major cyclone Ilsa expected to make landfall this evening Australian time on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for April 13th. Looking around the world right now, it's quite difficult to ignore the major system that's active right now, Cyclone Ilsa, a powerful Category 3 on the Saffir Simpson scale, about to impact the coast of Western Australia. The 14th storm of the year so far, Amang was the 15th, and that's just died out to become a remnant note low now over the northern Philippines. 49 days until Atlantic hurricane season and it's looking pretty quiet right now with just that big frontal system moving along uh, off the eastern seaboard there. In the Pacific then, there's the remnants of Amang with uh, not much convection left of it now but it is concentrated over Luzon and a 10% area of interest way out at sea. We had that much higher in the percentages not long ago, not personally sure why, but it is down to 10%. And there is Ilsa, which recently recorded on the um, some of those islands off the coast. I've forgotten the name already. I was just looking at it uh, with a pressure of around 942 millibars, very close to the center of the storm with strong winds, probably up to close to Category 4 status on the Sapphire Simpson scale. And that would be a clear Category 4, maybe even borderline 5 on the Australian scale right now. Uh, but as it stands, we have it at 125 miles per hour and a pressure, I think, we're going with 941. Of course, this is a situation that could change fairly quickly if this rapid intensification is indeed continuing. As we look back at this satellite imagery, a loop over the last uh, 24 hours or so, you can see the amount of rain concentrated over the cyclone right now, or within the cyclone I should say. Uh, lots of red zones there, so certainly potential for flash flooding wherever it makes landfall. Um, it looks like now that it will make landfall on the western uh, end of 80 Mile Beach to the east of Port Hedland, and this is the latest satellite imagery just curving southwards now maybe a slight eastward element in that movement now the eye has still not really appeared properly yet but it's certainly got a very tight um, vortex circulation there and I think we could be seeing an eye emerging very soon if it does it may well be a pinhole the way this is looking um, especially given that on the ground observations caught the storm very close to the center but still had very strong winds suggests to me that the eye is tiny in Cyclone Ilsa. Here's some radar imagery as well probably suggesting something similar there. It does look like a pinhole to me when we look at that Australian radar. That will become a little bit clearer as it gets further into range in the coming hours. Here's the Philippines right now. What's left of Amang? Uh, you can see a secondary circulation just up there over Isabella province uh, and this is the radar image although it's only partial by the looks of things uh, but we're still seeing various amounts of rain uh, across Quezon and up towards Aurora province. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific right now look decent and continuing to warm up 30 degrees in a couple of spots off the coast of Mexico. The Gulf, um, Gulf of Mexico there really has um, injected further 27 to 28 degrees Celsius temperatures there quite a lot in the last couple of days and the Gulf Stream just about getting itself going off the coast of Florida. And this is the North Indian Ocean, those warm temperatures creeping further north as well in the Bay of Bengal, 30 degrees quite clearly over a large part of that sub-basin. And in the Southwest Indian Ocean temperatures are still decent down here as well, a few little cool pools now near the Seychelles, uh, but towards Mauritius and La Reunion temperatures are still 27 to 28 degrees and in the northern Mozambique channel pretty warm there as well. As we know, Cyclone Ilsa has taken advantage of very warm sea surface temperatures, 31, maybe even pushing 32 degrees, as well as the Gulf of Carpentaria there and the Coral Sea, very warm sea surface temperatures around the Solomon Islands, over 31 degrees Celsius, and towards Fiji, around about 29 to 30 degrees, and a similar number around the Samoan Islands and Vanuatu. Western Pacific slowly revving up as well, 
Now Mang was always going to struggle really because temperatures are only just decent enough there over the northern Philippine Islands right now but I suppose they weren't doing too badly and it is slightly above average over the most of part of the Philippine Sea but look down towards the southern hemisphere actually pretty close to normal now in the western Australian region but look off the east coast into the Coral Sea much above average there who knows we might see a late season surprise Gulf of Mexico well above average and the El Nino effect looks like it's really coming on strong here uh, through the Galapagos Islands there well above average getting on for four degrees above average actually Oceanic heat content looks like this. It's retreating generally just a little bit now in the South Pacific, but still copious amounts in the Coral Sea. Eastern Pacific is starting to increase in its uh, zonal area. And in the Western Pacific, also getting a bit better there as well. Looks like we could be in for a substantial system uh, a substantial season in both of those basins this year if that keeps up. GFS computer model, this is the forecast here, landfall all along 80 mile beach which is very sparsely populated thankfully uh, but there are small populations in that area um, and we could see very strong winds over there, a powerful storm surge and of course uh, very high rain rates which could lead to flash flooding in the region. We could be looking at winds of over 140 miles per hour at landfall which is getting close to 240 kilometers per hour, well above 200 kilometers per hour at the very least and of course um, a storm surge there which could be very significant as well. Here's what we're looking at towards the Solomon Islands. You may remember yesterday the GFS forecasting a substantial tropical cyclone. Well this is what it's forecasting now, a very weak one, uh, very close to New Caledonia by the, the end of the five day period there. Uh, quite a broad circulation. Does it manage to close off properly? Well that will be a big question here but just how much it's trended since yesterday leads me to really doubt what might happen with that system. Here's the rainfall expectations, you know, that swathe there cutting right through the central part of Australia there um, and stays quite far north as well, doesn't affect any areas further south. But looking at those maximum rainfall expectations, we're probably looking at a further 10 inches or so on top of what might have already occurred along the coast right now, east of Port Hedland. 10 inches is the forecast, 250 millimeters, and that gradually decreases as the storm heads inland. Just a few little areas on the Northern uh, Territory region too, and around the top end, six inches possible up there as well, but that's not really associated with the cyclone, but certainly something to point out as well. That's 150 millimeters. And of course they got enhanced rainfall from the early part of this cyclone in its formative stages. Enter the moderate range then and this is what we have in store in the Western Pacific. GFS is not giving up on that potential typhoon to form in the far eastern part of the Western Pacific near the Micronesian Islands. There it is wrapping up before we get to the end of the middle stages, around about day 8 I think that might be where it starts to develop and it does become a typhoon at the end of that day 10 period there so it's not completely outlandish to suggest that that might still happen eventually but we're certainly not looking at this to happen in the next five days and that's why our chances are very low that's all the serious stuff covered you can take a look at the force 13 merch store by scanning the barcode and taking a look at all of our products including our full season and individual storm animations by request also, our still waiting for Hone t-shirt is still in stock. Well, in the silly range, let's take a look at what else happens with this typhoon. GFS took it on a wild tour of the Western Pacific last night, and here is the forecast again. There's certainly a significant typhoon there, at least Category 2 status, possibly bothering the northern Mariana Islands before starting, well, it stalls actually, and towards the end of that loop there, it is still in a very similar location, really just slows down and to a crawl and then almost to a stop there, just off to the northeast of the very northern islands of the Mariana chain. So that's interesting, and you can talk about that as well as everything else that's ongoing right now on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13, and I expect that we will be live for Ilsa's landfall in the morning uh, UTC and evening Australian time. What happened on this day? It was April 13th, 1991 that we saw an, uh, certainly a, 
a classic surprise storm, the Angola Cyclone, which occurred, as the name suggests, off the coast of Angola in the South Atlantic, a very odd place even by South Atlantic standards towards the eastern part of the basin. And we also had Cyclone Marion, which we can't forget, a Category 3 that was peaking on this day, although it was quite a bit further away from Australia than Ilsa is right now, and was continuing to head southwestwards away from land. Fascinating day in history on this day. Back to 2023 and the first name on this year's Atlantic naming list is Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific it's Adrian and in the Central Pacific it is still Hone on list one. In the Western Pacific we didn't get Sanvu in the end, the JMA kept it as a depression that didn't get a name and in the North Indian Ocean the next name is Mocha still as well, been waiting a little while for that one too. Code Orange still in effect right now, that's our alert level, the second highest here on Force 13 for Cyclone Ilsa. Next up is Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean is Fabienne, and in the South Pacific it's Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.